Hi, Bridge Yogis, how are you? Uh, these videos never feel good to me by the time I get to this point. I've had to rearrange furniture, adjust lighting, move my mat about a thousand times, take off dog collars, put dogs away, let people know that I'm doing this and barricade doors. There's a lot that goes into this, so sometimes by the time I get to this point, I feel like I'm not approaching my yoga with a good attitude. <laughs> and it's probably the perfect time to do yoga. Uh, I always have said that uh, any time that you spend on your mat is uh, well worth your time. But it also, like this is, I've called this a magic carpet because it has the ability to take you from one space and place, maybe mental mindset. By the time you're done with you know, your, your practice, you're in a completely different head space, physical space, heart space. Um, and so in that way, this is, you know, let's, this is a perfect time to do yoga. So let's do it together. Today I'd like to do um, just a pretty short floor-based balance class. It's one of my favorite ways to play with all of the, the components, the strength, the flexibility, the, the breath work, um, but there's the stillness Part that I think is really nice too because you get to get into a shape and you know make some minor adjustments for the greater whole if that makes sense so as we move into some poses that are gonna be pretty challenging also kind of fun dig for the breath and notice what's going on notice what's you know what is so let's do it shall we sit tall and close your eyes Begin to deepen your breath. Acknowledge distractions, sounds, possibilities, maybe a doorbell, a dog scratching at the window, a buzzer on a washing machine. Notice how you're feeling. Any body parts that need special care and attention. And then soften your facial features, almost feeling the muscles um, in the neck and above relax corners of the mouth turn gently upward. And come back to your breath again. I'm ready to do this, are you? Bring your hands to heart center if you'd like to connect through an intention or dedication, take a moment to bring that into focus. And then a gentle om, I hope that you'll participate with me. Inhale. And exhale. And then inhale to a gentle om. some light stretching and core connectivity. Let's keep the left leg as it is, extend the right leg long. Go ahead and wiggle your right ankle out, flare of your toes, maybe find some movement there below the knee. And we're gonna come into a, like a side angle pose. Now at the studio we use blocks, uh, maybe for support here, maybe we use some books. Um, maybe you take your right forearm and elbow and cross it just um, above the knee. Let's take the left hand and press it into the left hip crease. While you're pressing down, see if you can encourage the ribs to lengthen equally. 
and then roll back just a little bit and lift the chin from the chest. Notice how the breath feels here. We're gonna add on here, inhale, send the left arm long, and then sweep it slowly forward and up, like it's an extension from that hip crease. Finding that diagonal line up through the fingertips. Mm -hmm. One more full breath here. I love how satisfying that feels in the like in between the ribs. And then when you're ready, please inhale your way up. And now set your left hand to the floor just outside of your left hip and then spin your hand so your middle finger points towards the edge of your mat. Now we're gonna press to the left shin, bend the right knee and plant the right foot. Take a deep breath here. And then as you exhale, we'll lift the sitting bones, send the hips up, the chin back, and then the right arm reaches up and over the ear like a reciprocal uh, side body opener here. One more fulfilling breath here. And then let's use the exhalation to release the sitting bones back to the mat. Before we switch sides, bring the feet together and flare the toes. Hands grip the tops of the feet, just forward of the ankles. Let's do some seated cat cow. Inhale, upward lift. Exhale, tuck in around the spine and roll it back. Let's continue about three more. Inhale your way up. Maybe that was for it. Just felt good. I kind of got lost for a second. Let's take the left leg out long and get situated for that second side. So left forearm and elbow down this time. Right hand into the right hip crease. On the inhale, send the right arm out and away. And a nice gentle movement here, sending the arm now up. Fingers are spread wide, palm turns slightly back and down. Notice the breath as it begins to appear like an accordion flex on that whole right side. The movement of the ribs, the deep connective tissues just up and around the hip crest there. And now leading with the right hand, inhale, come up. Mm -hmm. And then set the right hand down outside of the right hip. This time we'll use the right shin, the left foot. Let's get ready, press down, lift up. Mm -hmm. And then send the left arm this time up and over your ear. Breathing here to feel more, to stretch deeper. in, reach back up, and then exhale, sitting bones back to the mat. Let's do another round of cat-cow seated. Let's go, inhale up, exhale. Inhale your way back up, and then tuck it in and round. One more. All right, inhale your way up. 
loop the shoulders back and around, and now take your hands to your outer legs and guide your knees together. Let's do a little Navasana bow pose. So slide the hands into the knee creases, and then sit as tall as you can. Keep the shoulders looping back so the collarbones feel well pronounced, lots of space to breathe here. And now tip back just a little bit. You'll feel the belly muscles start to grip, which is what we are seeking. And then maybe de-weight the toes. If it's reasonable to lift the shins, go ahead and do so. But if you feel tension or um, unwelcome pressure in your back, find some support. Maybe keeping the fingertips down or maybe even keeping the toes to the mat. Wherever you are in this, set your drishti. Gaze right over those big toes. If it's reasonable to go deeper in this work, maybe send one or both arms forward. Maybe even adding some movement with a gentle breath connection. Inhale to go back. And then exhale to lift up. Let's continue. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And bring it back up. Let's just do one more. Inhale to go back. And then bring it up. And now let's work our way onto our backs. All right, friends, let's now take the legs up towards the ceiling. And then bring the hands up over the head, like your chin, your nose, press your palms together. Bend the left knee 90 degrees. And now inhale, lift the shoulders up. And we're just gonna twist over to the left, pressing the back of the right hand outside of the left knee. And now bring the left hand behind the head to support the weight of it. All right, so once we've set this foundational pose, we're gonna move from here, but I invite you to do it slowly and be reasonable in your range of motion. Let's inhale, slowly take the right leg forward and down to a degree that feels reasonable in your back. And then exhale, pull it back up. Let's continue. Inhale, follow that slow, steady breath. Exhale, bring it back up, maybe a little scoop of the tailbone. Inhale, lower. Exhale, bring it up. Inhale. And then exhale. How about one more beyond this? And now bring it back up and set it down. Let's prepare to switch sides, arms up, legs up. This time bending the right knee 90 degrees. Inhale, pick up the shoulders. Exhale, twist to the right, securing the grip hand, uh, the left hand, right knee, right hand behind the head. Inhale, same thing here. Find your range of motion. It may not be as full as mine. That's okay. Exhale, bring it up. Keeping the shoulders lifted. Inhale, left leg forward and down. Exhale. Good. Continue slow, easy pace. Inhale, and then exhale. How about one more here? Take your time, keep the shoulders lifted. Inhale, left leg forward and down. And then exhale, pick it up, little scoop of the tailbone, and then let it go. All right, simple spinal twist. Bring your knees in towards your chest. Roll all the way over to the right side, and send the left arm behind you. So once we set the shape, we really get to feel the breath do the rest. So relax here, upper body. Notice the fullness of your breath. And then with the completion of your exhalation, perhaps a little deeper into the twist, maybe the chin starts to pull back over that left shoulder. back to the middle here. Inhale and then let's pause. Switching sides. Lifted bent knees lower stacked over to the left. Right arm reaches to the right.
really excited for this practice. I haven't done this kind of really concentrated work in a while. I find it to be challenging and really fun. I hope that you enjoy it as well and remember not to take it too seriously. It's balanced, so it's wiggly and it's wobbly and that's all part of it. When you're ready, please bring your legs back up to center. All right, friends, let's rock and roll along the spinal ridge a couple of times. It's gonna feel good. And now let's come right into tabletop position. Hands and knees. All right, so a lot of work from the floor. Um, things to consider. Nice even grip of the hands, even distribution of effort there. So pressing down at the base of the um, index finger and the thumb, and then gripping with the pads of the fingertips. All right, so let's do some cat-cow from here. Soften belly, lift the chin, take a full breath here. And then exhale, tuck it in around the spine, roll back, press back just a little bit. Now this is yours to explore, keep moving and breathing, maybe pausing. Maybe isolating some work from our knees if you feel like a blanket or a pad will be useful. Please take a moment to get that for yourself. Let's take the left leg straight back and then focus on a slight internal rotation. Um, so you can imagine the inseam of your left leg, your left trouser, uh, right at the middle of your body. Now press away from the floor, tightening the low belly, and then send your gaze slightly forward now. So we've got this really great long line of spine. Press down through the right shin and the top of the right foot. And then let's begin to de-weight the right hand. Maybe start to send it forward, positioning it in a way that the thumb is up. All right, so here's that wiggly wobbly work I was talking about. Deep in breath, soften facial features and a whole lot of interest in what's going on. And by that I mean like that coordinated effort. If you dip forward, the body rises in the back, but then there's this uh, connection to bring everything back into balance. And that's where we gain so much strength and stamina and work like that. If you would like to squeeze the right heel up towards the right glute, that will deepen your effort here, deepen your challenge. You may be ready for that, maybe not. For three, two, replace the right hand and the right shin. Now, start to peel the left hip on top of the right hip. And then imagine the whole right side, the hand, the knee, the shin, the foot, everything on that right side in one line. Now, press the left heel back. Draw the toes up towards your chin. And then let's send the left arm up in opposition of the right. So one uh, line, two arms. Notice the quality of your breath here, the pace. See if you can slow it down and connect to the soothing properties of it, how it can keep you grounded and present. For three, two, look down, replace the left hand, square out the hips again, and now set the left toes to the mat. We're just gonna press through the heel, attempting to open up the back line of that left leg. Soften that stretch just a bit, and then keep the left leg plugged in as it is. We're just going to swipe that right leg straight back for high push-up lift. Strong arms, steady gaze. You can lower the knees if you feel like the intensity is too much too soon. Let's hang out here and breathe for three. Two, good, lower the knees, back to tabletop, cat, cow, soften belly, lift the chin, inhale, exhale. Inhale forward and up, and then in and back. 
One more. All right, friends, let's come back to a neutral tabletop position. Send the right leg back. And then consider the alignment details. Turn it in just a little bit. Press away from the floor, feel the belly draw up towards the spine. Gaze is forward and down, so we're carrying that length right up to the base of the skull. And then when you're ready, let's begin to transition our effort to the left shin, left foot, right hand, and then de-weight the left side, and then explore slowly sending it forward. Lifting, lengthening in equal measure. If you're up for that secondary challenge here, maybe start to squeeze the left heel up towards the left glute. Invite the movement that follows gracefully, maybe with a soft smile. Let's hang out and breathe for three. Two, replace the left hand, left shin, look down, maybe get a visual line or reference, and then start to peel the right hip so it stacks on top of the left. And then with this, let's maybe gaze down, check the alignment of the leg. You should be able to see the front line of the leg if it's too far back. It'll connect to the glutes and the muscles at the back. We're trying to stay connected to the abdominal wall here. All right, so look down to the left thumb and then send the right arm up. Sending the gaze slowly towards the lifted thumb. Three, two, good. Look down, replace the right hand and square the hips. Right toes touch down, let's spend a couple of breaths Pressing back through the heel, keep the belly stop, uh, strong, belly pulling up towards the spine. Coming into our high push-up plank, keep that right leg just as it is, squeeze above the knee and then swipe that left leg straight up. One more breath in and out here. Let's come into downward facing dog. Fill up with one more full breath and then exhale, hips up and back. Movement through the head, neck and shoulders. I recently had a conversation with a student and they were saying that they felt disconnected from their practice. My advice was 10 breaths in downward facing dog and then see what happens. One more breath in and out here. And then let's lower the knees and come into what I call like a half tadasana. So we're gonna stand on our knees. Knees are hip distance wide. Pressing down through the shins and the tops of the feet again, those are parallel. Let's now Lengthen the tailbone down towards those knee creases. Feel the belly tighten, the lumbar portion of the spine feels supported. Gaze now slightly forward and down. Let's bring the chin up and back so we get to feel that sense of traction right up to the base of the skull. Next, bring your thumbs to heart center. I just find that this sort of reinforces all of the building we just have done. All right, so some isometric holds here. Let's slowly ease our way back, 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 pressing into the shins and the tops of the feet. Nothing has changed from the top of the head to the tail bone. Keep the belly uh, pull back, tailbone lengthen. If you feel pressure at all here in the low back, press through the knees and come back up. Otherwise, explore this in a way that feels challenging and beneficial, but nothing that feels other than that. 
really anchoring our effort here in the low belly, starting to fire up the front of the legs. For three, two, pressing through the shins and the tops of the feet, inhale, come up, and then just a moment to soften. A little bit different work here, let's send the arms forward, squeeze them strong and relax the shoulders from the ear so there's no tension in the, like the slope of the neck. All right, so now we're gonna come into like a, like a chair pose from our knees and our shins, so with me, take a deep breath. And as you exhale, sitting bones pull back over the heels, upper body lowers forward and down, arms stay parallel to the floor. This might present enough of a challenge where you are fantastic, stay there and breathe. Otherwise, maybe you start to play with squeezing one heel up at a time and then ease into, like you're oozing into some cracks, you're getting low and long. Shoulders stay back, chest stays lifted, and this way we honor the spine and stay in a place of strengthening. For three, two, shins, feet down, inhale, come up, and then exhale to bring hands back to heart center. I'm going to turn just so you can see me. Let's all take the left leg out. We're going to do like a warrior two style, meaning that the Foot is wedged, toes are in, heel is out. Right foot stays as it is, we're on the knee, the shin, the foot, everything stacked right behind that knee there. Now let's get as tall as we can here. And we're gonna send the arms out like a T. With this, squeeze them strong. Imagine someone's coming to press on the back of your arms and they're so engaged that they're gonna um, resist the pressure of that touch. We're going to reverse this in a moment. Turn your right palm up and take a deep breath. Exhale, lift up and go over to the left. So that opening of the side body sort of mimicking our early work from um, our sitting bones. But now let's take the left hand and slide it towards like the outer edge of that left leg and then turn the palm up so we avoid putting any lateral pressure on the knee there. Love the way this feels, stretching all these, um, like getting past the muscle uh, tissue to like that deeper connective tissue. There's also some engagement with the abdominal wall quite a bit. If you'd like to uh, deepen that challenge, maybe take the left arm up. Be reasonable. All right, one breath cycle left here. And let's inhale, come back up. All right, friends, now we're gonna take uh, this shape and just challenge our balance. So strong arms, relax the shoulders, and now reach over towards the right. Pressing down through the right shin and the right foot. Let's set the gaze towards the right edge of your mat. Let's now begin to de-weight the left foot. This is that wiggly, wobbly work. You can't take it too seriously. But find a level of fascination, like with the, the uh, automatic uh, movements of the body, that coordinated effort. And now let's inhale our way up. Exhale, bring it all back together. All right, let's come to a second set here, setting up that hat to dasana in the same way. Thumbs to heart center. Knees within the framework of the hips, shins and feet directly back. Full breath here. Now let's exhale, lean back, lean back, lean back. You've been here before. Ease your way back to where you left off or maybe uh, just find what feels right. And maybe send the arms forward, squeeze them strong, keep the shoulders smoothing down. No tension in the neck. For three, 
to press down to the tops of the feet and come back up. A moment to take a break. And then let's continue. Send the arms forward, squeeze them strong, full breath here. Exhale, sitting bones back over the heels. Right? Chair pose. Keep the heart lifting, the uh, upward lift of the spine, creating strength along the, um, the muscles that align the spine. And then maybe start to squeeze and then settle. Three, two, shins, feet down, press down, inhale, come back up, exhale, hands back to heart center. All right, let's now take the right leg out, positioned like a warrior two. Tail lengthens, heart rises, send the arms out, squeeze them strong. Pressing through the shin on the left side, from the top of the left foot to the mat. Let's inhale, turn the left palm up. Use your breath up to lift up, reaching to the right. Right palm turns up and maybe slides further down the outer edge of that right leg. you're ready for a deeper challenge, maybe right arm reaches up even with the left. Notice any other like fundamental changes here. Um, if you need less, please play with less. Three, two, mm -hmm. inhale your way back up. And let's reset the tone with the arms, the shoulders. Next, take the left arm and reach, reach, reach. Look forward and down. And then pressing through the left shin, the left foot, let's see if we can play with lifting the right side. Notice the breath here gets a little sticky. together. Well done. Isn't that fun work? I like it. Let's come back into downward facing dog. Tucking toes, lifting knees. Mm, lots of satisfying breath felt at the back of the body. Lower the knees. And let's come all the way up onto a like a seated posture. Sukhasana, easy seated pose. Walk the hands forward. Take an inhale right below those collarbones. And as you exhale, let's start to ease our way into a deeper forward fold here. Inhale to lift up. Exhale, relax. All right, so now let's take the right foot, cross it up outside of the left leg. This is where we're going to spinal twist over to the right. So bring the right fingertips back and around. And then with the left arm, hug the front of the right knee. And then let's let the breath do the rest. Full breath in. And exhale. And then 
let's unwind and let's drop. All right, so coming back into easy seated pose, Sukhasana, whatever foot you hadn't felt last time, switch. All right, hands to the floor, inhale, upward lift. And then exhale. So it's oftentimes we do the automatic um, foot forward. And so this side always feels a little bit harder, a little bit tighter in this hip. Anyway, use your breath. twist on that second side. Whatever foot you've got forward, cross it up and over the opposite knee. This time my left hand's going to come back around and my right arm is going to hug my left knee. Inhale, sit tall. And exhale, tightened ribs, spin the belly. And then maybe start to look back. Unwinding top to bottom, chin forward first, pull back with the wrapping arm, and then let's lean back and extend, extend the legs forward, give them a nice shake. And then we'll take the hands as fists and pound. And how about we rub that in? Mm, my body's craving a forward fold right now. Let's do that. Walk the hands forward, inhale, lift the chest. And then exhale, take your time, crawling hands forward. If you've got um, like a sensitive back, you might want to keep an upward lift of the chest or maybe even slide something below the knees so you can maintain a gentle bend there. This is, um, should, you should be led into this based on how it feels, not how you think that it looks. So close your eyes and eliminate distraction. Notice how it feels when you take that next deep breath in. And then notice what happens with that next breath out. Maybe you feel encouraged to explore more. Softening here. Let's take our time. Inhale your way up. All right, friends, it's now time for Shabbat. And if you feel like there's anything left unexplored, please uh, um, give yourself the time um, and space to, to feel those things. Maybe pause the video and do that now. Otherwise, let's come right onto our backs. Maybe take one final stretch. And then soften. Allow the arms to rest at your side, palms up, fingertips just curl in. Soften your facial features again. And just find some stillness, some relaxation.
back into the body. Let it be subtle. Knees pull in towards the upper body. Maybe a little squeeze, a little hug here. Roll to the side of your choosing and pause. If you set an intention or if you dedicated the efforts of your practice, this is a really good time to, to look back at what that was, what was so important to you at the beginning of our practice. Maybe recommit or reorganize. Take your time, please, and rising to a seated posture. And join me with your eyes closed and with your hands at heart center. Take a moment to acknowledge like, man, I feel really good on this end of the practice. I hope you do too be doing this together in person shortly. Um, we're almost there. Thanks for sticking with the studio, for um, continuing to um, support our efforts, maintaining your friendships. Well, until we get to do this together again, my friends, may you walk in love and in light and with wisdom. Namaste.